sell some of them. You're wasting all your time and money on models. Paint what you have. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Model Club TV episode 50. <laughs> yes, we're losers. No, see? That's how dumb you are. What? Roman numeral. That's a loser symbol. No, that's an L. Roman numeral L is 50. No, L means Five. loser. This has oh. always meant loser. 5 O. Oh. L is 50. L meant 50 long before it meant loser. <laughs> oh, okay. Hello, everyone. <laughs> As always, Scott Johansson and Jason Walker. We've a done this now co host 50 times, 49 times. And who knows? Yeah, but I did three how to videos and you've done nothing. That's not true because I put one up, a new video on my own. Webpage. Okay. What is your own? How does that benefit us? Uh, how does that benefit our viewers? I'm going to link it over to there. Oh, oh now you're going to link it. You're going to get a button. No one's going to link it. I should get a button for myself. Uh, how are you, Mr. Johansson? I, I can't wait to get this over with. <laughs> Why do you always say that? It hurts my feelings whatever uh have you been starting to get offers just so you know oh are you from who yeah well i can't tell you that <laughs> i i have a no compete clause uh, but yeah i need to warn them <laughs> about you know how your prep starts five seconds before we uh record. whatever who knows um, <laughs> uh heavy metal spike has been added again he and sure has <laughs> he's sent us this amazing picture this could be the best thing so far i i love it episode 50 thank you <laughs> 50 shades of green but uh, as you know so it's 49 I I no this is green okay if you were here you'd see this is green it's a it's a gray green it's a green green <laughs> On camera, it reads as gray. Well, I can't help it. Your Zoom camera doesn't. Pick it's it your up. lights. Uh, Heavy Metal Spike also sent us. Dude, I still like your face in this picture. Oh, oh, I saw so the. It's <laughs> so good. Um, sent us this one of me on the beach. I'll let everyone read it for themselves. Or maybe I'll read yeah. it for our audio listeners. It's all psychological. You yell Barracuda. Everyone says, huh? What? You yell, Jason, we've got panic on our hands on the 4th of July. That's actually very accurate, uh, knowing my past 4th of Julys. And then Scott, I love the t-shirt he gave you. I know, isn't on that this great? one? And I don't know if everyone makes that out, but the Scott loves Peter thing, the shark in the background, um, the boat in the background. <laughs> He's and so of good. course, you getting your brains sucked out. Um, <laughs> And then right before we went on, Jason's uh, lovely girlfriend, Jamie, sent me this picture of Jason's Oh, did feet. she now? Yeah. Oh. Uh, feet on the beach. And uh, uh, so. Okay. I can I'll prove my feet don't look like that. No, I don't want to see your stinking feet. They're okay. Dirty. Look how dirty they are. Look at your dirty, nasty feet. I walk around barefoot today. Because you're nasty. So this what's is this? Why I, I, so Scott. You said something about shorts. Yeah, I don't want to see your hairy bare legs either. So you don't like legs either? I don't like men legs. Okay. It's like sandals and, and all that shit. Okay. Women, I, I look at women's bare legs all day. I don't want to see your nasty, hairy hair falling off on my couch feet. Okay. I, I don't. I You're no. And look, How you just showed you made me it nasty feet. Okay. I really, yeah. You know, I, I mean, ugh. sorry. Look at it. But look, and you know, you're probably going to go upstairs and put that shit on your couch and rub it on your poor girlfriend <laughs> like you did the other night when I was on the phone. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and then what? <laughs> shower two days from now? You know, come on. Uh. Yeah, that's probably actually that's accurate. <laughs> that last thing. Okay. I want everyone to know the quote of the week was even his mom says he's filthy. <laughs> okay. That was that was the quote of the week I got uh, talking to Jason and Jamie. So there we go. All right. So 
our little movie segment, Scott, you said you watched a movie. What did you watch? Oh, I, you know, I, I don't know why I fall for it. <laughs> <laughs> was it one I recommended or no? Because Batman wasn't enough. <laughs> so I finally said, all right, I want to see what all the hype is about. And I rented Spider-Man, uh, the new Spider-Man movie. No oh, way on, I, something I have not seen. Okay. Well, then you I can won't go talk full, about it like, much, you or you're not going to watch it. No, say anything. Okay. You can say the whole thing. So, far, what is it? No way home. Far from no home? way home. No way home. Parts away home. Uh, should have stayed home. Um. <laughs> so there were aspects. If you're a fan of the Spider-Man film franchises. There were aspects of it that were cool because they brought villains in from the Tobey Maguire and the um, and sorry, Garfield. spoiler alert. Um, yeah. But. And the Andrew Garfield, you know, so they brought those villains back and they got the actors to play him, William Defoe and all that, which was awesome. So okay. out of those well, before we go any further, because I'd like to expand our movie talk a little bit. Yeah. Out of those three Spider-Man talk. movies, who was your favorite Spider-Man? You know, I didn't, I wasn't in love with any of them. So if you said to me, I have to pick one. Yeah, you got to pick one. But I get I would, not being I would probably with... say Tobey Maguire. See, I liked Andrew Garfield. And I'm one of the, like, that's rare, I think. Hold on, I have to let my dog out of the room. Well, look, I'm way out of focus. Oh, boy. Come on, baby. You want to go outside? We're back. We're back. All right, ladies so, and gentlemen, we're back. Yeah. So I would say Tobey Maguire. Okay. Because Understandable. Uh, the first two movies weren't terrible. No. Third one was. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't like the, um... <sighs> I never liked the Green Goblin Here outfit. Here we go with the yawns already. Hey, <laughs> really I, I work today. Oh. So. But anyway, so... So, did you like the Green Goblin originally? Like that? No, the... I didn't. never liked the outfit. The, yeah, me It was stupid yeah. looking. Yeah. That being said, you know, the way they brought it together where they brought, and I don't know how much of this you've heard or not. But I know they're with, there. I, they, I, he goes to Doctor Strange and wants to erase everyone's memory because Mysterio told everyone he was Peter Parker. And so he wants Doctor Strange to make everyone forget. And he does this dimensional thing and he fucks up the dimensions. And so anyone that knew he was Peter Parker started to come into this dimension. And so it ended up, you had all three Spider-Mans in the movie. Which was for the fanboys, as we call them, and um, girls, probably a, a a geek overload. And to me, it was just another Marvel gimmick. Okay, and it was another just I don't know. It, it... My pro, and I don't like. I still the... don't like the Iron Man, Spider Man. That okay. I was just. That's exactly what I was just going to say. And it's something we actually agree on. So it's and I it's, want Spider-Man to be in a suit, like a Spider-Man suit, where he has the web shooters, but it's not Iron Man, where you're looking from the inside of the screen and heads up displays and what the hell is all it's so which dumb. is what I liked about the Toby Maguire. Although Toby Maguire, the web came from in him. Right, he had, yeah. But I could live with that. Yeah. Okay. So But that's why I like the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man the best because he looked the most like the Spider-Man I like with the bigger eyes in, in the suit. I like that suit the best out of all of them. I think, I think I did too. Actually, I'll give you that. I think I did too. It was the most Spider-Man suit. I hate this and it's in all of the Marvel movies. And it started with guardians of the galaxy where, where star Lord pushes a button and his helmet appears, right? That was cool for star Lord. Now every stupid superhero pushes a button and their helmet appears or disappears. Mm-hmm. Or in the case of Stone, Tony Stark, his whole Iron Man suit appears out of thin air. And it's yeah. stupid. I hate it. Hate it. But anyway, this is your... So anyway, um, it, it just wasn't good. You know, I mean, it was... <laughs> That's the best review. Scott Johansson, it just wasn't, wasn't good. good. You know, it wasn't. I, I'm sorry if the Marvel fans... Are, and Jason knows. There was no bigger Marvel fan than me. Yeah, it's true. But they've really just, 
I, I, I'm either bored. I'm oversaturated. I don't know. It, it's they've lost me. They've lost me. They lost me a while ago now. And like I said, I haven't even seen this. I, I probably won't. I didn't see the second one was Mysterio. And I really like Mysterio as a character. I didn't see that one. Like, I don't know. It's anyway. Yeah, it's it's jank. It, <laughs> <laughs> another quote for the back of the DVD box, Scott Johansson. It's, it's a jank. It's yeah, jank. Johansson says it's jank. <laughs> Ah, uh, all right. Speaking of Jank sort of jank, not jank. Stranger Things. I finished it last night. Are you a Stranger Things person at all? No. Have you watched any of them? No. Wow. How do I have this discussion then? You don't. Um, <laughs> but I do want to recommend season four. I think was was better than the last outing, and it's not as good as the first season. I don't think anything ever will be. Because you grew what you when were you ten years old? Seventies? Seventy three. Seventy three. So like the year before I was born. So this I'm trying to think of like what's your what's a movie that deals with kids that were your age when you were ten? Can you think of one? You know what I mean? Like a set like like mm. Stand By Me is what, the fifties? Bad News Bears, maybe. Bad New- right, yeah. Okay. Will, Bad News Will Bears. Walk in the Chocolate Factory. Yeah. But Bad, you know what? Bad News Bears is a good example. That's so. Stranger Things is like that for me. It's when I was a kid. Is when that movie was set, and everything that took place in that season one was like, that was me. And it was the first TV show that really spoke. Like it was like that's my life. What they were doing, riding bikes painting Dungeons and Dragons figures, watching dumb, scary movies, and just like being a kid, like of what it was like to be a kid in 83. It's totally like, and it spoke to me like nothing else. The follow-up seasons are okay, but that first season's great. This one's pretty good, and it kind of ties everything together. They're going to do one more, but it's definitely worth checking out. What about the uh, Goldbergs? That's, that's your era. No, it is, but that's... That has Pat Oswalt in it, and I cannot stand no, Pat No, it doesn't. Oswalt. Yeah, he's the voice. Is he the voice? Yeah. Oh, I can't stand the kid when he's <laughs> she's, 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 she's talking. <laughs> yeah. It's like Goldberg's is good, but it's not serious enough. Like Stranger Things season one, that was me. Like that was me as a kid. Well, Goldberg's too, the way they jump around. And Goldberg's is funny. Like and, and they try to do certain things. And they'll say, but they won't give a specific date. Yeah. So they'll just say, yeah, I went to, with my grandpa to see Batman. Well, what they don't realize, Batman was the end of the 80s. Right. It was so 89. that kid would have been, you know. Yeah. You know, so it's, they just throw shit in there, take a few liberties. But and anyway. that's what, yeah. But Stranger Things, pretty cool. Like there's the ba- main bad guy in this season, beautiful makeup, beautiful design, great looking bad guy. Like, it reminded me a lot. This season reminded me a lot of Empire Strikes Back with the way it kind of ends and stuff. So it's it's a good it's a good watch. I, I, I you should watch it like I should watch it. You yeah. should definitely one stop uh, wasting time on Spider-Man and <laughs> Batman. And another movie, thanks to Joe Bob Briggs, um, is a movie called Habit. And I had never seen it, never heard of it. It came out in, I think, 95. If I go back and look, I think it's 95 and it's a vampire movie and it is the best vampire movie I've seen in a very long time. And it's, it reminded me, it actually depressed the hell out of me. It's a very slow burn. So if you're not into slow burns, it is not your action packed vampire movie. It is not that at all. Um, but it's made me sad because it reminded me a lot of myself again with this and stranger things. It was like, me being a kid and me being a, a, an adult living in Chicago and going into this, like when I was, you know, my, my drinking heavy hooking up with people days, this, this movie reminded me a lot of this and how like the horrible people you end up with and how they suck the life out of you. That's what this movie kind of is. And it, <laughs> that's the case. Yeah. This must be the sequel. Cause you're sucking the life out of me. <laughs> But this movie, I it's about an alcoholic guy that ends up dating maybe a vampire. You don't know. 
Um, and it's, it's really well done and I really, really enjoyed it. And I hope more people see it. Uh, it's habit. Great vampire movie. And if that doesn't bring you down enough, watch Schindler's list. And Jason, <laughs> oh, oh man, I'm, I'm a ball of joy. Anyway, giveaway, okay. giveaway, garage kids, garage kids. Let's talk about garage kids for our first giveaway from Paul Gill. The Gill man productions is the elephant man. Right. Uh, the elephant man. Paul gave this to us at Wonderfest. And you, oh, this is another you. Scott shipping. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so we'll be tonight. So tonight. So it's, and then I'm done. Then I think I'm out. So then yeah, I can I tag out. Or no, no, no. Yeah, tonight's, yeah. And then you're out. Okay. All right. Here we go. I have all the commenters from, or no, wait. I got the Worthling stuff, don't I? No, I got it. I got you all got the, the, you got all the Worthling stuff? Yeah, I do. Oh, good. Oof. <laughs> which we'll talk about later. Tell, oh, before we pull the feet, we have a night. First of all, before we pull for this, the feet, you want to kind of explain what we're going to do with the feet? Well, let's pull this first. Let's, let's, let's stay on track. Ah, oh, I don't want to. All right. AD, I don't want to stay on track. No, ADD, we, we got to stay on track. Who won the elephant man? Who is not an animal? Brian Donahue. Brian Donahue. Yay, Brian Donahue. Brian Donahue has won the elephant man. Has he wait? Has he won something recently? I don't think so. Brian no, Donahue. Too. Got the elephant man. You know what? New season. We're wiping away all previous winners. Yeah. How about that? There we go. Sure. What I've been doing though is taking all of the losers. As we like to call them. And I've been putting them into this thing. And I'm gonna start p- pulling some prize packs, I think. Just out of loser name. Yeah. One of these days. So loser Brian Donahue. Prize, prize picks. <laughs> yeah. All right. So Brian Donahue, get us your info. I'll mail this out to you. Yep. Thank you, Paul Gill, Gillman you, Productions. Gill. The best. And, that is such a cool outfit, man, too. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so we're we're gonna do another contest. We're gonna do I don't a know few, if yeah. anyone that saw the last episode, that bastard worthling <laughs> sent me all these feet. And what it is is, um, I I said, well, before you continue, I, I need some credit that I'm near, I'm for, about to be 48, and I can still lift my leg up like this, like without issue. Credit? Because you can lift your leg up. <laughs> my fucking dog lifts his leg up. What? What? <laughs> There's a lot of people in our audience that could not do that. That they, all right, wait. Let me see if I can do it. Hold on. All right, yeah. Let's see. Are you ready? Watch, you're going to pull your stitches. <laughs> you have to go. There you go. I can do it too. So what? All right, sorry. Continue. Well, you're multi talented. I am. Why don't you spill another coffee? <laughs> I don't have one this time. <sighs> so, Mark sent me these feet. And what we've decided is we're going to do a Worthling giveaway. And with some of the stuff that Mark gave us, I think we said that we're going to do the Gargantua, right? Hold the Gargantua, up. the Gira's Revenge, where he's got the boat. And I'm thinking the little Small, creature hand. The little creature hand? So okay. a duo, a little. That's going to be next episode. Yep. I'm going to take all these feet and I'm going to put them in a container. It's going to be Guess the Feet. And it's who can guess the number. Now, this contest could go on a few episodes. So here's how it's going to work. So we're going to take the highest guest and the lowest guest each week. Guess. And we're going to tell you if you're high or if you're low. Okay. So they could both be low. They could both be high. Yeah. What I'm hoping for is one's high, one's low. And we can narrow it down until right. someone guesses the exact number. So this could go on a while. Okay. That sounds good. Okay. We, but we, um, that's what you're going to win. You're going to win um, some pestilence swag. Wait, I got a button. Oh, no. I hit a weird button. All right. Sorry. There we go. There we go. So we'll start that, and I'll explain it all again. From Pestilence Labs. Uh, next episode. So. And then I forgot to hit the Paul Gill button as well. Well, that's great. There's the Paul Gill button. And speaking of buttons, 
Paul's done nothing for us. Speaking of buttons, I have a new button this week because someone asked for it. Mike Calvert? I have a Typhon button. Typhon. Yeah, and Mike said he thinks he's figured his shipping issues out. So hopefully uh, that's all worked out. And he thanked us for the um yep the press i guess yep and uh, <laughs> press working out co- yeah um we did get a lot of people suggest how we want to do all these giveaways that we have stockpiled and the, it seemed like the general consensus was spread them out so that's what we're gonna do we might do two an episode maybe three i might combine a couple things here and there um cg wanted to do the trivia thing there's no way we're trying to make this easy. I don't feel like grading papers. Model club trivia, but we'd have to rewatch every episode. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or I like, and even having people send stuff in, I don't want to, it'll just be too much. It's a good idea. It's just, it's too much for, for what we have going on over here. Right. So, um, this week's giveaway, we're going to do two. Scott, you want to do the first one? Well, the first one will be. Um, our good friends at Sweet Life Productions donated this beautiful quarter scale Doc Holiday. Um, I'm your Huckleberry Bust. It's their first um, release. You know, it's their first first release. Yep. And thank thank all those guys again um, for donating this. It's a beautiful kit. I have one. And again, it's it's fantastic. So. Um, I would like to ship this domestically. If you want to be overseas and enter, as long as you agree to pay for the shipping, you can enter. How's that sound? Sounds good to me. Domestically, the lower, the 50, lower 48, States, <laughs> lower 48, whatever, we'll ship it to you for free. Okay. Cool. Canada, I'll split the shipping with you. Okay. Uh, anywhere else? Um, sorry, it, yeah. it's just too much, but I'll, I still want you to be able to enter. So feel free to enter. We'll ship it as long as you want to, uh, foot the bill. So this one's pretty obvious. They just type in, I'm your Huckleberry, right? I'm your Huckleberry. Yeah. Okay. In the comments, you want to win this kit. I'm your Huckleberry. Type it in the comments on YouTube and you're in. We'll pull names for this right. next time. Um, we had a lot of people offer to pay shipping for winning stuff. We don't want to do that because it's not a lot. We want to do no. this as a gift, as a thing. It, so. and, and I do. It's just the overseas stuff yeah. is crazy, but I hate to omit those guys if they really want to, you know, cause I mean, yeah, for in, sure. In the case of this, you know, this is a, it's a, it's a $165 kit. Hey, and if someone wins overseas and says, Hey man, I'll flip the 40 or $50. It's going to cost you. They're still getting a, an expensive kit. For the price of the shipping. So to me, it's still worth it for them. Yep, for sure. Okay. And again, thanks to our friends at Sweet Life Productions, uh, John Allred, Gordon Oberman, Jeff Camp, and George Ganser. All right. Hold on. Where are you going, Huckleberry? Oh, getting that giveaway. Hold on. Next giveaway. Okay, so this, this one's a different story. So, Ali Raphael, formerly of, of Zotes, 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 I think it's Zotes, Zotes. Um, it's Shane McGowan ended up had his remaining kit stock and, and donated it to us from, through, from Ellie through Shane to us. And so we have a couple kits to give away. We have two that are pretty big. And we have two that are really big and there's there's on this copy, we're missing some pieces. Shane is supposed to get back to me with those missing pieces, but we have one complete one ready to go. Um, and I don't know the name of this kit. I don't remember it, but it is a former uh, Zot's piece and it comes with, I dropped a big piece. Um, of course you did, but it comes with this wall frame. And this box that you attach everything to, because it makes like a diorama vignette kind of thing. But it has this girl like that sits, I think, behind the window, like kind of like that. So Man, why huge. are you pushing her boobs up? Yeah, she's got her well, I lost my earpiece. <laughs> Those 
ball back here. Um, but there's a lot of pieces to this, and I'm just trying to like again, it has this giant box that the pieces sit in, and it's got an arm that kind of goes across their chest, two gargoyles, a bunch of supports, no direction. So here's the Do we thing have a with picture this. of this kid anywhere or I I might try and find one and put it here and I'll find it and put it up. Um, but I have not seen one as of right now. And so I have two of these, but one's missing parts. So we're going to give one away now. The catch is, this is local pickup. <laughs> so I will drive an hour. If you want to meet me somewhere an hour from right here in Chicago, I will meet you somewhere. If you're close, you know, well, this will be yours. If you want to drive and I'll meet you halfway, that's an hour. Or if you want to drive from seven and an hour from here, whatever, we'll make it work. So this one, we're not going to pull names for though. This one, you just have to email me at model club at gmail dot model club TV at gmail.com. And if I get more than one person that wants this, that's willing to pick it up. I'll put those names into a thing and draw and we'll pick somebody out of there. But this is a local pickup kit. It's just too big to ship and too weird. So if anyone does want this, again, I'll try and find a picture. It's actually, it's really nice. You can do some cool stuff with this thing. So thank you, Ellie. Thank you, Shane. We have a, like four more things from Ellie and Shane total, I think. But yeah, I was hoping you could bash the microphone again with the kit. This thing, like, I'm not kidding, is like 20, 15 pounds. And no. Shane had these for a while, so... Uh... Jason sent me a picture when he was uh, cleaning them off. Yeah. That was pretty funny. There goes the coffee. Okay. Oh, only if there there's, was some more. There's but, no coffee this time. Okay. I think I broke a rib. I broke a rib, but I can put my foot up and show everyone my nasty feet. <laughs> All right. In the comments a couple episodes ago, when we were talking about the Bilbo that David Horvath gave me, I think it was Trevor. One, I mentioned the ones that I had. This old kit. So it's almost a what's in the bin, but from, from me. And it is from these uh, SB Productions. Do you remember SB? No. No. Uh, but they had released two versions of this, which is the animated Hobbit characters. Let me bust these all out and i'll kind of show everybody um there's two versions nice to see you're prepared i am prepared it's right here what are you talking about <laughs> so watch me tell him he's not organized watch him blow a fucking gasket yeah. like he's a wonder fest who organizes everything <laughs> anyway sorry so here's the two dildos bilbos bilbos sorry so these are the two bilbos that came with this kit this and then there's the golems, which are my favorite. Um, and they have two separate bases, and I don't even know what kind of it's like this gray resin, but then it has like I don't know if the person had primed this in something, but it has like a brown or if it's mixed resin, I don't know. But if you that look at this, resin, see, see if it's brown, yeah, is that a little bit warped? A little bit, but it's Bilbo yeah. sitting on the rock talking a golem doing the riddles in the dark and is that from a movie it's from a book and mm. then it's from the animated cartoon <laughs> and then here's golem so there's this golem and they sit on this piece i'm surprised you haven't uh painted that <sighs> yeah me too And then this one, it's the same kit, just updated with different sculpts and a different base, but they're both from the same people from SP. And this is the new base. Here it goes. There's the new base. I'm not dropping anything. There's the new Bilbo. And this is the new Gaul. So that's them. So those were the other kits. That's what Trevor wanted to see. And I do have those. And I love it. I just love Gollum. Gollum's my favorite. So it comes with a white right. metal sword hand. Two white you metal are a hands. Gollum. I am Gollum. All right. So that's that. I showed that off. Scott, you want to talk about the Peabody that someone had asked about in the comments? 
Yeah, someone had asked about Peabody. And at the beginning of the Sherman and Peabody um, cartoon, there was this parade. And gentleman Matt, hold on, I had his name here. So I don't want to screw it up. I used to have his info. Oh, look how who's prepared. Well, you told me last minute you wanted this. Last minute was this afternoon. It's last minute. I was working. All right. I want to say it's Matt um Matt Gomby. And he always sculpts these things and does these things. Well, this thing was entered as three different kits. And so at the beginning of the Peabody thing, you got this parade. And you can see the the starts off with the knights and the archers and Cleopatra and then the natives and then the gladiator and the elephant and more gladiators and then Sherman and Peabody and the chariot and the whatever they are, I'm going to just say fairies and they were throwing rose petals behind them and then the guy sweeping up at the end. Okay. So he did this in three sections. He entered this and every piece is sculpted. It's not like he sculpts one and casts them and reposes them. He sculpts and paints this whole thing. And uh, I, I, this was, to me, one of my most impressive pieces, only because of the subject matter was cool. And just the work that goes into that. That's all hand sculpted. That's all. Um, you know, the bad thing is he entered this in the. Um, I think it's a sculpting category, original sculpt. Which and he couldn't enter it in humor and super deformed. And um because it could be in that too as well. Uh, but anyway, uh someone asked to see this. That's kind of, I, I, yeah, there but that's I have a question. Humor and super deformed. Just because it's a cartoon, kids, just because it's a cartoon, it goes in there. In there. Yeah. I, I don't like that. No. Yeah. I mean, a hu- my, like, to me, super form should be super deformed. Humor should be telling a joke. Right? Like, you make something funny. Mm-hmm. This is just the standard. Like, I think it's... It should almost be... I don't know. But no, really cool piece. My favorite's with the, ro- with the rose petals. How he handled that. I really like it. Oh, that. yeah. That's cool. All right, news and reviews. Here we go. Oh, we, got, we got a lot. Oh, Scott's yeah. yawning. Oh, boy. Got a yawning. Okay. What, do you have to work today? Yeah, it's been a tough life for me. Okay. My good friend, Well Winner. Our Well Winner update has been busy, busy, <laughs> been busy, 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 busy. Uh, the first kit, I believe, is available on our Patreon, and that is Josie and the Pussycats. Josie and the Pussycats. Yep. And um, it's got bass, big bass, big backdrop. Um, so, you know, really nicely done. It's got to um, be a lot of Josie P fans out there, right? I don't know. So the next one are, they were three knights and a king, and they always screwed up the king. Yippee, yappy, and yahoo Aren't they supposed to be musketeers? Yes, basically, yes. Okay. So what's funny is I've been printing a lot of Well stuff for a client. And he asked if Well was going to do these. So now this is within the last two weeks. <laughs> and so I said to Well, I said, hey, are you thinking about maybe doing these? Because, you know, this guy I'm printing for is interested. This is literally. I think the next day he had the king done. <laughs> within a few days, he had Yahoo done. Uh, Yippee came out like two days ago, and yeah, Yappy came out today, as a matter of fact. So, yeah, I saw it's, <laughs> you know, it's like unbelievable. Okay. And then in the meantime, I know I showed his Impossibles kit. It was the diorama with all mm-hmm. of them, and it locked into the alter ego, the whole big base. Gotcha. Well, this is the Impossibles just as individuals. And it's different poses. So um, these are available individually. Cool. And uh, so he's got those. 
And uh, he is a busy guy. Man. He is a busy guy. Bell and I, is a busy guy. Jamie Sy had a good idea for us. Which was to get well to make a Wonderfest. Look at you yawning again. <sighs> a Wonderfest exclusive kit from Model Club TV. Hmm. And I really think that's a good idea. And we're going to have to kick some ideas. Away. Okay. I may even pay him to do the one I was thinking of. Which I kind of don't want to say. God. Which I do, I talked to you about. Yeah, I mentioned it. No, not Squidbillies. Oh, I do want Squidbillies, but not Squidbillies. Um, goes along with what Mark Worthling has coming out, but we'll talk about it later. All right, Tony Cipriano. Tony Cipriano. Okay, uh, has just come up with the Mighty Mitor. It has a one six scale, same scale as his Space Ghost was. And um, Tony has also been uh, showing, you know, the other stuff. He still is available. So for pricing and information, um, get a hold of Tony on Facebook. Yep. We'll have the link Tony below. Tony Cipriano sculptor, Sculpture or just Tony Cipriano. Do me a favor, just because. If you contact him because of this, tell him those fine guys at Model Club TV sent you. Yes, please. Okay. Hey, Wells sent somebody to us the other day, to me the other day. Yes, he did. He did. And I appreciate that. Well, if you're watching, thank you. So um, next, our friend from Pestilence Labs, Mr. Worthling, Button. has started to ship out the Godzillas. And we're going to put a little short here of me unboxing mine. That's if everything goes well. If it, comes. If it yeah. shows up tomorrow, we're going to put in right here an unboxing. If there was no unboxing, blame the mail. Well, everyone, as promised, we taped yesterday, but this beauty came today. You can see I've already started the process. And this is our Pestilence Lab box art Godzilla. And uh, I love Mark. He uses popcorn, old school, old school popcorn. And I've got packed with love. Oh. And more packed with love. And what we have here on the bottom. And what we have here in the bottom is the base. Look at that. So we're going to get rid of the big box. And check that out. And I don't know if you can see the details here, but there's railroad tracks. And there is also, this is, um, this is what you call master mold making right here. Okay. Or... Look at the amount of resin you save. That's just fantastic. So let's open the body. You want to open the body? We'll open the body. Why not? Don't cut yourself. I'm not an idiot. Let's open the body. And check this bad boy out. As you can see, I'm just tearing into it like it's a, a Christmas gift on Christmas morning. Here we go. Look at that. Now, a lot of people are going to ask about this texture change. Where this is more of a traditional Godzilla texture, and this is more of a scaly green lizard texture. And all I can tell you is, and I was wondering how Jeff would do it. If you look at the actual Aurora box art, that's how it looks. Tail goes in there. Fits, look at that fit. Nice, huh? And anyone that says, look how long that tail is, again, I'm going to defer you to the actual box art and say, well, you're going to have to check out the box art. Okay. And, um... Is it hollow? I don't think so. If it is, it's not super hollow. It might be hollow, but it's not real hollow. Okay. I mean, you know, so it's got There's some... heft to it? It's got some heft. So... 
And I don't know that we'll unbox all these, but I'm gonna, I wanna give this as much of a review as I can. And you can just tell this was packed with love. Okay, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'll check these out. So these are the little building things. That go on there. That's pretty cool, huh? What an interesting mold that is. Maybe Mark will share with us the mold pictures. Yeah, that is kind of that'd be cool to see. Those are different because um, very interesting. And I'm a maniac. I got to look at everything now. I hope you guys are happy. You want reviews? We'll give you reviews. So what do we have here? We have tape. And there is the lower jaw and the tongue. Look at all those teeth came out. Really nice job. Louder. Louder. Okay. <laughs> and um, as you can see, that head's going to fit right in there. Just pops in. Just pops in, yeah, a little seam work, but nothing crazy. And then uh, you have stuff stuck to you. And what we have here, it's probably the part everyone's waiting to see. -da -da -da. The King of Monsters. Look at that. Now, I have to say, of all the box arts that looked like the kit itself, and of all the box art kits, look at that looks like the Godzilla kit. It does. It? Yep. Doesn't it? Look at that. That's, 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 wow. That is just fantastic. What's this? <laughs> Who needs this? <laughs> um... So, for those of you that want to ruin your kit, no. For those of you that want the Markzilla, there you go. Um, a lot of people ask me about the contest, so as soon as we have information, this bad boy's going out. So, uh, <laughs> well, that's awesome. What's in this box? Look at that. <laughs> okay. Idea number one. No, this looks, uh, the castings are great. It's beautiful, really. Yeah, I mean, look at it. This is, yes. This feels awesome. Like, feels fantastic. So, I would guess what you have here are the arms. Yes. The arms. And you have the, um, the dorsal fins. Okay. Okay, and I, I'm not going to take them yeah, all out. I'm not going to bore you. No, to open up the, the envelope. And, um, yeah, you've got some buildings. We've got a couple name plates. So just um, wow, just beautiful. So I have box art tribute number Uno. I don't think it fits in there. It doesn't if fit. it does, if it does, the tail wouldn't fit. Okay. And it's sealed. Look at that. The wax, I'm gonna break the seal. Wait, 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 let me get in on it. Ooh. An official wax seal. Yeah, that's nice. So because of that, we're going to open it differently. Because I, I don't like to break my wax seals. <laughs> and here's where Scott commits suicide. <laughs> Slices his wrist. With a dull exacto knife. And Jason laughs. I would laugh for a minute and then I'd help. Okay. All right, let's see what we have in the, the envelope, please. Ladies and gentlemen, the envelope. Oh, there's more. Look at this. So, oh. get some swag. Get a little Godzilla sticker. Decal sticker? Probably sticker, huh? Get a little uh, Godzilla VHS box. Oh, nice. And I think that's a magnet. It is magnet. Okay. 
we have your certificate limited edition number eight with Mark Worthling's autograph. Why anyone would want that, I have no idea. Um, it's got a seal of destruction here. And uh, we have the uh, instruction sheet. I believe that was done by Rayner. And very well done by Rayner, I should say. Oh, that is nice. Yeah. Hold that up like... Yeah. I like that. Well done, Rainer. So, um, flip yes, it around, Rainer. Flip it around. Let's get the other thing. Oh, I love it. Just wow. It's awesome. And there's your boxer. Very cool. There you have it. The Pestilence Labs. Box Art Tribute. Godzilla. Um, I'm just going to say this again, and I've said it before. This was this is a great series of kits. And I just wish the ones that came from Monsters of Motion were better quality like Mark's have been. But I want to thank Mark and Jeff for continuing this line because this was a line I always wanted, but... I didn't want to finish it because I was like, it's not done. And Mark has indeed, um, for all intents and purposes, has finished the line. Yeah. So um, so there you go. Um, I'm going to take this now upstairs and I'm going to stick this up my ass. Okay. All right. That's cool. So it's coming out now. I'm on the list somewhere. I think I'm way down at the bottom though. So mine won't be here soon. And um we're going to get to that Mark Worthling. Uh, once once he gets this slowed down, we're going to get a handful of those heads to send the out to uh, yep. entries and uh, have the Worthling head contest. So, Okay, what's this? Buckwheat's Buckwheat. Modeling World. So, a couple things here. Buck's site is still up. Now, Buck used to, every year, do kit, the kits that were coming out. Coming out that year, yep. So... But Buck still has a what's new and has news in there. And there's a lot of good content still here on this. One of them is the shows. Um, so for those of you that couldn't make Wonderfest or any of the other shows, if it's on Buck's site, he's got a ton of links to a ton of pictures. And um, that's where I got the pictures today is linking through here. And in doing so, it reminded me that Buck has taken his kits through the years. And you can go to his website and click on that kits through the years. And you can now download them all for free. Buck has finally released. Really, he used to sell them for like $5 for what you know each year or whatever. Uh, Buck's decided now to sell them. And just for the history of things, it's well worth it. It's great reference. So um, cool. thanks, Buck. For all, I mean, he's one of those original guys putting in a ton of hard work. So yep. thank you for doing all of that and continuing to do stuff. Look at his website. It has over a million views. Yeah, that's nuts. We got 552 subscribers. I think 53 when I checked. Oh, we went up again, huh? Okay. <laughs> Probably go down after this one. <laughs> but no, that's great. It's good to see he's still doing this stuff. Uh, Paul Gill? Paul Gill. Go Man Productions. I pushed the button so I didn't forget. Uh, Too bad. He has this Bounty Hunter bust available. I'm not going to put the name up there but you know what movie series it's from uh actually it's from a tv series based on a movie series but very cool piece uh to go along with his other kind of more obscure characters in that universe and great piece and paul has another jaeger piece excellent another That's jaeger funny. army piece i like this this could be my favorite one yeah i think i agree now, with you now i haven't bought any of them because it's just not my thing per se but I really like this. this. Is the Howler, and obviously we know who it is. It looks like he just saw some shit. Like somebody just got blown up in front of him. Like Dracula just took a shell to the face. A Frankenstein just blew into pieces again. <laughs> yeah. So he's like, "Oh no, oh that's great." But no, look at this. I, I like this one. I, I like cool. this. One. Oh, Jeff's still having fun with that. Okay, and from Saturn, from Saturn. 
Limited. Uh, Vince Herman. This was digitally sculpted by Joe Ladotti. Um, and the base was done by our friend Phil Kupka. This is uh, what movie? Mysterious Island. Mysterious Island. Yep. And this can either sit on the shelf or hang on the wall. Oh, cool. Have you ever seen Mysterious Island? Uh, a long time ago when I was really little. Yeah, they used to show it on Family Classics. Yeah. The first time I saw it, I was like, I didn't know what it was. I started watching it and it just got better as it went. And then the whole Captain Nemo was in it. It was just, yeah, it was really cool. So um, the wings are it. cast in translucent resin, I believe. And uh, Saturn Limited model kits. Look them up. Vince Herman. Um, it's really cool, though. Really nicely done. Uh, Joe Simon. Phil, everyone involved, great job. Great job. So I'm sure we'll see um, our friend Rod Hickey is working on the paint up. Right oh, good. Now. I talked to Rod today, or not today, this week. I'm sorry, Rod. And, uh, yeah, that's an hour. I'll never get back. Um, <laughs> but yes, yeah, so I talked to Rod, and I talked to Phil last night, and Phil congratulated us on 50 episodes. Oh. So, um, yeah, there you go. And and Phil's just had a little bit some eye surgery and he's recovering. So um Oh good. Hopefully there we go. Better. Next for you Aurora fans out there, uh this gentleman Nick Dorado. And I got this off Buck's site when I was looking through it, but I did see this on some of the Aurora groups. Is this Aurora relief plaque? And you can see by the size of it there. I'm not sure the pricing or anything on that, but uh, you can track it down, I'm sure. And a little tribute to James Bama there. He's on the one headstone. So um, how is that done? The relief plaque? Yeah. Because it Um, looks like photographs. They look like the actual art. Like, Well, uh, the painting, that if that's the painting, then the paint is beautiful. Because yeah. you see the resin casting compared to the painting. So I, I, I think oh, to maybe. really make that stand out, it, it's um, okay. It's got to be the painting. And then the Frankenstein hands. That's kind of cool. Yeah. All, All right. right, Scott. Something we both have talked about in the past. Someone's doing? Yes. Um, gentlemen, Rick Lindy. And this is an add-on and he did it for the Jaeger classic um phantom and christine probably put another phantom on here too but it's a digitally uh sculpted organ wow it's just the organ it's not the base but it's just the organ and it's going to be between two and 225 it's digitally printed um and uh you know, Rick said the, the keys might be a little small, but I mean, the overall effect is there. Yeah. And um, it's something I think many people have wanted to come with that kit. Yes. So and there it is. Uh, yeah. And there it is. And hopefully we'll get some better pictures of it as it as the, as the project moves along. But um, and I talked to Rick and Rick's local. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and I, I spoke to Rick and. Um, Really nice guy. Where's he live? Like, you don't have to give it away. What did he say? I forgot what he said, but he plays kind of out here. He's been out here in Orland and because he's in a band. Okay. And this is a guy that's made a living playing in a band, you know, and which is hard to do. Yeah, it is hard to do, you know. And it, so it was a very interesting conversation. He was telling me he does like 300 gigs a year. Oh, wow. You know, and that's so you look at it, you take the weekends out of it, it's almost every day. Yeah. Wow. But he says it's a lot of hard work, a lot of hustling, and you know, but um yeah. So there you go. Awesome. And uh if he did those that paint up, that's that's nice work. He also did that mummy that I really liked. Um yeah, that we showed the photos of. So uh I brought up just real quick, we had talked about it last episode, Monster Model Review, uh with Rob Madison. And we talked about his other channel, but I wanted to make sure we got it right. It's Board Game Archaeology. And if you haven't checked it out, it's him and his son, Hunter. It's Robin Hunter. And they just review board games and, and kind of do like a sample playthrough of the games they're playing. And there's some really cool, like, 
history mm-hmm. of some I think pretty famous and not so famous board games that they go through and talk about. And there's a ton of these episodes. So if you have any interest in board games or even just, you know, the history of toys, please check them out. I'll link to both channels uh, here as well. And it's a really cool series. Like I noticed um, on the Monster Model Review photo uh, that certain Bilbo kit happened to make it onto the uh, picture. Did you even notice that? Oh, look at that. No, I didn't. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Look at that. Oh. Um, what's What I enjoyed about Rob and Hunter's, and I don't watch every episode, but I have watched, you know, a few of them. And they had the Skittle Bowl. And I don't know if you remember the Skittle games, but they had Skittle Bowl. Yeah. And the later issues of Skittle Bowl were plastic pins. Okay, well, they had one of the originals like I had when I was a kid. It was wooden pins. So it was cool to see that again. The wooden pins. The uh... Yeah, they have that. Yeah, that is cool to see some of the old. And like, I think they did the game Trouble. And they had the box that, again, when I was a kid, that's the one we had. And uh, so it was cool to see like the old boxes and stuff. Yeah, so. they do good stuff. And then real quick, a Brent Krug and the figure kit garage. Please check them out as well. Uh, always some great reviews of model kits over there on YouTube. So we just want to shout out to our other YouTube channel friends. And please, again, great reviews over on the figure kit garage. And you have something from Jesse. Jesse, uh, garage kit US. Okay. Um, first of all, I'll give a little news. That maybe I'm not supposed to give, but I will. I think he has finally heard from his paint supplier. And will hopefully the pigments are starting to come into the country again. And he can get replenished on paint because he's been out of most of his paints for a long time. That's good news. Because of the supply chain stuff. So there we go. So Jesse sent me some pictures. And this first one is all four of them. And I think what it is, is I think there's four different heads. Yeah. And this is the wizard from his Denizens of Zoe. Denizens of Zoe. Denizens of Zoe. And I like that little uh, spider type critter. And I'm sorry, Jesse, I, I'm not up on what you call that. Um, it's probably I'm sure spider. I'll get a phone call. <laughs> and uh, But I, I thought that thing made a good, it would make a cool kit as well that sells for 295 dollars. it's 50 pieces so it's one six scale and uh you know it's definitely i i think it's got kind of a steampunk feel to yeah, it too it does, his whole that whole series does it's, so yeah cool what's this next thing this next one is and i'm surprised this isn't some crazy show you've seen because you know you you've seen everything um That's queen of swords cool. okay and this is a Re- Roberto Von Baer sculpt. This is quarter scale. Oh, boy. And Jesse sent me some pics, and, and we'll include them here. Um, the detail on the mask. Just look at it. Yeah, it's nice. And um, our guest last episode, Anya, this is what she was painting at the Wonderfest class was the face. Oh, this- okay. All right. So that being the case, I believe the mask is a separate piece. Yeah, it looks. Yeah. So, um, but the detail and you can see the detail on the sword and, and, you know, it's, this is not going to be a inexpensive piece because it's quarter scale and it's Roberto. So all that being said, uh, he doesn't have the price quite nailed down yet. So I don't want to give anything out, but hopefully by next episode, we might have some pictures of both of these painted. Uh, the wizard also was sculpted by Jim Maddox. I don't know if I mentioned that. So, okay. No. Maddox did the wizard. Roberto Von Baer did the um, Queen of Swords. So, okay. All right. I, I wanted to real quick. Uh, back in April, I think it was George Stevenson retired from being a judge. Well deserved. Congrats on the upcoming free time, sort of, <laughs> which you won't have much of. But the one thing I want to talk about here is if you're interested in getting any of his older pieces. It looks like they're going to be retiring a whole bunch at Blackheart. So head on over there and just go through. And if you were on the fence of picking something up, this might be the time. Cause it looks like they're going to be retiring quite a few pieces there to make room for some new stuff. So if you're interested, head over to Blackheart Enterprises website, which is blackheartmodels.com and um, order some stuff. 
there you go. Get George, get that darn George some business because he's retired now. He's on limited yeah. income. Yeah. <laughs> Fixed income, not limited. Well, who knows? Maybe it is limited. So, so uh, Scott, what'd you get in the mail? Would you get anything? What did I get in the mail? Hold on. Anything to review for us? I got some stuff. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, Jesus. So I just got a text. Oh. Okay. Please, everyone. I love dogs, and everyone knows I have a beagle. Okay. There's this news story going around that they saved 4,000 beagles from this whatever. Okay. Huh? What do you mean from this whatever? From this like bad home, bad. 4,000? 4,000 beagles. So I've seen it. It rips my guts out. They have puppies. If something comes up that I can get one of the puppies, because I don't necessarily want a full grown dog. I want a dog from a puppy. I would be more than happy to adopt one or two of them. So, um, oh boy. Yeah. My wife told me that's like a calling to us. So, oh, oh no. boy. Oh no. So, hopefully, there's other people out there doing it and adopting these puppies and these older dogs. Um, yeah. You know, and uh, some of Where these dogs. Where was it in, at? Uh, Virginia. So, okay. $4,000. So, anyway, that's crazy. That. What did I get in the mail? All right. What'd you get in the mail? Well, Let's see. Can you guess what this is? Uh, a poster? Nope. In how photos? About, how about now? Oh, FEP uh, screen protectors. Screen protectors for the Elegoo Jupiter, which mine should be here at the end of July. So oh, wow. Big news. Big printer. Big everything. Yeah, mine, I don't know. I'm, <laughs> I'm afraid. I also got from our good friend Steve Iverson. Let's see who makes this. Starfighter decals. This is a set of actual decals and not stickers for the Red Baron kit from the Snoopy and the Red Baron oh, okay. that just came out um, from Atlantis. So those are water slide decals. So I picked those up. They also have them for the Sopless Camel. They're available. I, I highly Iverson. recommend Microsol and Microset instead of water. Yeah. And uh, those are available here, culttvmanshop.com. Great service. Steve's service is great. Yes. I also yes. got from Steve. This bad boy finally came out. Snoopy. That's, that's a bad He's boy. Joe Cool. Oh, Joe Cool. Okay. And I'm hoping they come out with water slides for this too. So I'm sure they will. But um, what's funny is I have a built up of this that does work. What does it and do? It's in rough shape, but it, it's fixable. What does it do? What do you mean it works? And so it's another motorized kit. And so what happens is you turn this knob back here. Yeah. And the surfboard does this and the Snoopy spins around. That's kind of fun. So um, what's kind of funny about this, though, is Joe Cool really had nothing to do with the beach. I think simply because they put sunglasses on, they called it Joe Cool. But, um, Joe Cool was more of a, here's Joe Cool hanging out at the student body. Joe Cool whatever. can go anywhere and be cool. The beach, wherever he wants. What else did you get? That's it. That's it? All right, That's I got it. some stuff. Uh, first easy one. This came today. I got my mini air purifiers for, uh, they were a little bit on, there was a coupon, so they were a okay. little cheaper. And so I'll hook those up. These are to try and reduce the smell of resin coming out of the, printer. I think they help. Okay. What you're going to be amazed with is how long one of those holds a charge. About how long? So people can see these. Okay. So what I do is I put it inside my Saturn. Just yeah. one, just one. Now, I'm going to warn you because you like to do dumb things like <laughs> our friend Tony. Okay. Don't knock it over when you're putting the cover on and where it's just barely cocked. So when the thing comes down and the build plate hits it, I'm barely it cocks cocked the too. build plate. I'm, bil I'm barely cocked. Okay. So, um, no, no, that's it. 
That's it. So you got a cover, a top, and then you've got carbon things in there. You've got that you you got to open and put Did in. Did you there. have to charge them out the gate because this button's not doing anything? Yeah, probably. Okay. All right, we'll give those a whirl. And so I only put one in there, and I put the cover on. I can tell you, I've had them still on twelve hours later when I take the cover. Oh, really? Okay. Well, yeah. There's one I bought because there's one for each Saturn printer, and then the Jupiter comes with it, right? So yes. Okay, next thing I got, I think like a bunch of other people after last episode, the Pan Pastels. Hmm. So I have a gripe with the Pan Pastels. And it is a Jason gripe. Maybe no one else will care. So I tried to rectify it today. So they come in a box and then they come in this carrying case, right? Only one of them has a lid. You're supposed to screw them all together and like the bottom makes the lid for the other one. So they store in a stack and they kind of screw wonky. Hmm. I don't like, I mean, I like it for storage purposes, but for ease of access purposes, it's not ideal. And these things, like if I just, if you just bump it, watch, like they come off really easy. So if you, you can't store them without a lid on there. So you can stack them all which is fine if you want to work that way. But let's say I want the color that's in the middle. I have to unscrew all the other ones. So Amazon, I did find they do sell lids for these, so you don't have to screw them together like this. Let me just get them all together so you can kind of see how tall the stack is. And it, I mean, it doesn't bother, like it bothers me just in fact that if I want to open that drawer, I want to be able to see right away which color I want to grab mm -hmm. instead of having to unscrew all of them. But the stack, is like this big, you know? So I thought there'd be a lid for each one, maybe tucked underneath, but no, you have to keep them like this to keep them safe, which I don't like. And that's going in the garbage. So those lids are supposed to come. People were complaining about the lids though, cracking. <laughs> I don't know if there's a good way for it. You know, and th this happens with, look, I'm all blurry and coming in and out. This happens with the 3D printing. This happens with, people in general okay they over tighten things yeah like what do they think's gonna happen well th that's what they're saying on the on the youtube review so the stack of lids comes like this supposedly but mm -hmm. they're so tightened down that when you go to pull them apart they're cracking and breaking so we'll mm -hmm. see what happens when it shows up uh, these next two things that i got oh and the the pan pastels come with a little pastel sponge and i just dropped something else <laughs> and Big surprise. But these are more for art stuff, and I'm not going to use it for that, probably. So, um, There's a YouTuber named Ninjon who does a lot of miniature painting stuff. And two things I saw, he had like the 10 like new products that Games Workshop doesn't want you to use or something. And one of them was this Uhu glue. And it's a, it's a tube of glue. It's made in Germany, so I'm sure Bern and uh, Rainer know all about it. But for some reason, I didn't know anything about this glue. And he said a lot of people use it to make like, I don't know. Can you see? Let's see if this will show up on camera. See how, yeah, a little bit. See how yeah. stringy that is? So they use it and it dries really fast. And you can use it to make like drool on teeth and slime and that sort of stuff. So I'll, I was, cobwebs. Yeah, or cob or something like that. So that's Uhu glue. It, it's on Amazon. Took a little while. It comes in a three pack. <laughs> I will tell you. Here he goes. Yeah, there's a smell to it. So it's a PVA glue, I think. Uh, polyacetate. I wonder glue. why he eats out of the garbage. <laughs> you got to smell the glue. So there's that. Uh, and as far as like, as an all purpose, I was looking at what it's supposed to glue. And it's, it's like everything. Like for gluing paper, it won't wrinkle it like Elmer's does, supposedly. So I'm guessing it's somewhere between a cross between Elmer's and rubber cement is my guess kind of how it is so have you had any luck gluing like plastic to glass no with anything you could try this why what do you got to glue so my wife has a hummingbird feeder that's oh, glass wow. yeah and it's got this plastic sleeve that goes on the bottom and that's got the threads on it that's right into the yeah, bottom yeah that's like i got yeah and it always falls apart especially in the heat and you know it might work silicone 
that's not a bad idea. Silicone, just some silicone, like bathroom silicone. Yeah. The last thing I got, You're and this was another pretty face. <laughs> the last thing I got, and this was my expensive, I'm an idiot purchase. And it comes in this white box. And I did a review and unboxing open up over on my YouTube channel that I'll link to here. And it is called the wow stick. And it is a rechargeable. Watch him break it. A rechargeable drill. I'm going to pull. Should I pull the other camera down? I will. Maybe it's like, but. So it's instead of a pin vice. So the pin vice I've been using on like the, I hate having to take the, uh, what's the thing called that holds the drill bit. Chuck the Chuck. So there's different chucks that you have to put in there to fit different bits. This, they all have the same end to the bit. So they all fit the same and you just put it in there. You tighten this down and you push this button and it, and it drills. And it doesn't drill like it's not like a Dremel where it's crazy and it's not it. I had something over here I was going to drill. Try your forehead. But, uh, I have this piece. This is a this is just some UV resin um, and it. It goes. Watch him drill it jams up thing. once in a while, but you kind of have to just back it out and then you're good. Well, see, if Jason knew anything about drilling, he would know that you are supposed to back it out and clear the chunks out and then. But now it's sticking a little bit. There, we're in. So real fast, great little mini hobby drill. Zip, zip. There, it, it is 60, done. It was $69. Kind of Corey Apple. <laughs> but there's the hole. See it? Yep. It works. And there's my mangled middle fingers, finger still. Still, huh? Yep. You know what you should do? What? Take that drill and drill that out. Live on camera? That'd be awesome. Although it's probably too late now because it's probably dried up now. Yeah. If you'd done that when it first happened, that would have been cool. I wonder if I could. Nah, I better not do that. I don't want to cry on camera. God, great, <laughs> wouldn't it? So that's oh. news and reviews. That was long. He's holding crap. his finger up with a drill bit sticking out. <laughs> oh, that was a great idea, Scott. Uh, all right. Workbench. Dun, 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 dun. You build anything, Scott? No, I painted something. What'd you paint? My front porch. <sighs> That's not what the show's about. Should I send uh, a picture? <laughs> yes, you should. Just put it up here. All right. I, uh, I did didn't some... use any pastels either. So. <laughs> I did a lot of printing, actually. Uh, I had a listener want the uh, Kuton. Uh, Salma Hayek model. So I printed that up and it turned out awesome. It turned out really cool. I scaled it up to get as close to one six scale as I could. Uh, she's really short. So it's probably a little bigger than actual one six scale. And it printed out beautifully. If anyone's interested in these at one six scale, I can do it. I think it's 120 uh, is what I'm charging for that. So if you're interested, I have to do the Cape solid. That's what kind of jacked the price up. A, there's no way to do it hollow and it's three pieces. Um, but the rest, it came out really nice, like really nice. And then I'm finally getting close to the end of my actual workbench project where I've been printing all these drawers and things. I'm done with this table and I'm going to put pictures up here and I have to actually have to do a couple Citadel's releasing new paints and I had perfectly planned out paint holders for the, the entire paint set. And now they just added a whole bunch of new paints to that line. So I have to reprint and reorganize. And then I'm building over there on the other side of my building table, uh, a corner. Cause the Jupiter is going to go on one side of this. Uh, I did another, I'm doing another set of drawers over there and it's just taking forever and I'm tired of the mess. Because Jason, away. I'm going to tell you why. Okay. Why? <laughs> Jason won't get a BL touch for his thing. My and, printer prompts have his, nothing to do with a BL okay. touch. Jason bought a second ender and he screwed it up on day one and it hasn't worked right since. And it's his own fault. Okay. No, it worked right. It worked right for a while. It started. I don't know what's wrong with it. It's strings. It's never worked for more than a week. Right. There's something that always goes wrong with it. Because right. the first thing the instructions tell you is to hit the switch. But that's that maybe. No, because it works right. I think you fried stuff. I might have fried something. I don't know. 
I don't know. There's something. So that is that the same like coffee sometimes. you spilled last week? No, that's some tea. Okay. <laughs> Took that picture yesterday. And then I printed uh, also from Kuton this mech, and it's a lot bigger. I scaled it up. I think this is going to be my next AFM article, which has a girl that rides on the back. So there's a front and back to it. This is the back of the, or the front of the robot. The girl kind of sits on the back shoulder facing the other direction. And I'm going to do that. And then I joined another Patreon. And this is one of the miniatures from that Patreon. And it's probably the best minotaur I've ever seen. Freaking love it. It's a uh, Bestarium, I think is how you pronounce it. And it's on my mini factory. So if you want to check them out, there's some really cool pieces on there that can be scaled up. So that's my workbench. <coughs> a lot of printing, not much painting. I did start painting this little base. I've been doing some printing. What's for printing? a gentleman, but I'm reprinting a lot of the stuff I printed already. Um, and we're going to talk about that. That's going to be our subject in a few minutes. So but, that um, brings us right to it. That's where we are. That's where we are. Okay, well, so I've topic. been printing for this gentleman who's a Hanna-Barbera nut. And he lives up in Palatine, so he's close. Nice guy. And so I'm printing a lot of well stuff for him. And again, so I, I want to ex- make this clear what happens when I print for someone. Real quick. What? We don't have a we don't have a guest this episode. Oh yeah. This uh, is it. <laughs> this is it. We we've been Scott and I have been having the well, last two weeks lots of discussions based on some stuff that happened online, stuff that happened that I saw. And we need we feel like we need to have just a conversation about some things. So Scott is leading into some of that conversation now. So I'm going to start the conversation again about STLs. And for those of you that have heard it a hundred times, I'm sorry. I print for this guy. And to give you an example, recently I did uh, Wells Mag- Magilla Gorilla series. So there's Magilla, there's Mr. Peebles, and there's OG, the little girl. The files are, the three files together are 81 down. So before I even print for someone, I I charge the cost of the file. Okay. And then I tack on the cost of the resin and whatever I figure for time. Now understand, time's not just time that it takes. You're also buying um, IPA. um, You're also taking the time to clean, remove supports, cure. Um, so you got paper towels, you've got, you know, all that stuff. I'm not someone that says, Oh, you got electricity. Cause I don't think that it's affecting my electric bill that much, but so you do have expenses. So when that's done and just for the record, it is not. So people know it is not a push a button and it's printing. Right. Right. For people. Okay. And in, in the case of this gentleman, I printed a lot of these and I have the files supported and everything, but he wants me to print them a certain size. So when I have to do that, I have to size them up. And the only way to do that sometimes is to kind of like lay them flat on the build plate and put the pieces half ass together. And then there's a ruler that you can import. And then you kind of scale up those pieces till you get the size you want. Yeah. And It's not that it takes a ton of time, but it's work. Okay. So it's not just, like you say, take the file, put it on the printer and print it. It's not. You have to orient it, stuff like that. So I'm going to go back to this STL thing. Um, In Wells' case, Wells sells these STLs. And, you know, when you give it next to the price of a garage kit, if you had a 3D printer, these STLs are cheap. They're twenty dollars. They're twenty five dollars. Okay. Some, some of, of them are, are more expensive. Sure. Well, we'll and and some of everybody's are more expensive. Yeah. So, what aggravates me is this, and and we've talked about this when we talked about him. This man feeds his family with the money he makes from this. Okay. He he lives in Brazil. Cost of living down there is a third of what it is here. So $20 here is $60 there. Okay. Roughly, you know, I'm I'm ballparking. 
what I don't like to see. So when I print for someone, and in the case of um, my friend Tom here, he says, I want the McGilly Gorillas. Okay, I print them. And the second Tom pays me, I email or I message well on Facebook, and I say, hey, send me an invoice for the McGilly Gorilla kits. And I pay him for the files. Now, I already own the files. I could print 100 of them. He wouldn't know the difference. Okay. The thing is, you're going to screw the guy. Okay. And and what's happening, and what I personally saw happen at Wonderfest, and I, I don't want to mention the producer. If you guys know who the producer is. <laughs> I want to go before we, this is part of the discussion. Scott, in the past, has been recast police, right? And fighting people's battles, getting in fights, you know, and you're trying to not have those arguments. No. You talked me, and I want the record to show, you talked me out of naming names for yes. this. I, yeah. would, I would gladly say the name of this person, but I'm sure everyone will figure out who it is. So, at Wonderfest, there was a gentleman that had taken one of Wells' kits had it printed, cast it in resin, and was selling them. Okay. And was probably selling them cheaper than I can print them for. Why? Because I'm giving well the cost of the file every time I print one. Okay. Whereas most printers, like if when I print for someone, I'm not going to go out, unless someone specifically asks me, I'm not going to buy the file. I, I want people to go buy the file and then bring it to me. You have a relationship with Well where it's easy for you to do that. Right. I want per someone has to have the file in hand for me to print it. That's how I like to work. I don't want to have to hassle. Or if it's something like for Kutan with the Salma Hayek, I own the license to print for that. I pay extra money every month to be able to print those guys, that guy's sculpt. Right. And some guys, and we've talked about this before, there's levels of how these artists sell their work. And what you can do with it. And none yeah, of them Patreon that I have seen, or, right. But none yeah. of them that I have seen so far, and you could correct me if I'm wrong, anybody leave it in the comments. I have not seen one person say you are able to print and cast and sell casts of your prints. There's no one, there's nowhere that says that. Because that's called mm -hmm. mass production is what they call it on there. And almost all of the licenses say you can't do that. Don't do that. It's awful. It's, and it goes right into recasting. And we'll talk about some other stuff here in a minute. Yeah. And it's, um, there were, and, the, and the same person had a few of Wells other things where he just used the head and the nameplate, put them on a disc and was selling those. And again, he paid once for the file. He molded and cast it and sells them as kits. Okay. And the really sad thing about this is this individual doesn't need to do that. He's got his own line of stuff, you know, and, and so, which is going to bring me to the next place. And that is Etsy. And I know we have some folks that, you know, sell on Etsy here and are totally legit. Okay. Do your homework. Okay. Find out before you ever buy a file to print. Or buy a file to bring to me to print, or Jason, or anybody else. Mm -hmm. Find out who the original artist is and pay him. Okay. Or, but the other side of that is if someone like I, I'll say it, CG Blade, he legit has the license from Kuton to sell on on uh, Etsy. Okay. So you don't have to go as long as they can prove that they're paying Kuton their monthly fee. Mm -hmm. They're in the the retail tier. They, that's fine. That's totally legit. But there's so many unlegit people <laughs> on Etsy that it makes it really hard. So like Scott is saying, please do your homework when it comes right. to buying files or buying and, prints or buying prints, because here's what happened to me too. And, and, and this, this all happened at once. Someone on one of the groups asked about groovy ghoulie kits. And someone mentioned my name, which is how I got tagged on Facebook. So I got in on the conversation. Well, first, one of the people on there said, well, there's someone on Etsy that sells prints, okay, for dirt cheap, and they're Wells kits. 
And this is a person I went and called out one-on-one a while back. And that person contacted well because he didn't believe me that I knew him. And they had worked something out, I guess. So well said, no, it's all right. Leave it alone. I said, okay. Well, I asked well recently, has this guy given you any money or this person? I don't want to say guy. Is this person giving you any money? He goes, oh, no. Okay. So, but they're still on Etsy selling stuff. So I'm going to tell you right out. Selling groovy ghoulie kits for $35. Okay. Now, well charges 20 for the file. So, and the amount of resin in one of those is about 10. Okay. So, if I was printing that and selling it for $35, I'd be making $5. It's not worth it. Okay. It, it's not worth it. This person is making $25 a kit because he's not paying the sculptor a dime. Okay. He paid him one time. Yeah. That's it. Okay. And now, like Jason said, there's Patreons, there's Kickstarters, there's all kinds of things. We're at different levels. You buy the right to print. Sometimes there's a finite amount. You can print 20 of these. You can print 10 of these. Okay. The intent was never print and cast in resin. And that's what I really want to emphasize is that's not okay. Like that is, it's not okay. And if you see someone doing it, please let them know it's not okay. Or just don't buy the stuff. Find out legit where it comes from. Yeah. Do your research though, because there are some, I'm on a Patreon that the guy says, I don't care how many you print and sell. Just don't sell my file. Yeah. Okay. But he doesn't say cast them and sell them. No, he doesn't. But I mean, again, it's what he's selling to our our tiny little like Funko style stuff. You know, and so if that's the case, if someone wants to sell prints of those, well, that's on that guy for not wanting more. But these guys are waking up and they're seeing other people are making money. If you're making money off somebody else's work for a minimal amount, chances are you're not legit. Right. Which brings us to some of this other stuff I wanted to talk about. Recasting number one, which kind of goes into, we all know. This hobby wouldn't exist. And this is a, a, a beef for years. Uh, uh, unlicensed versus licensed. And we can talk a little bit about, I, me personally, I understand that. I think it's crappy. Like if I were to invent a comic book character and someone started selling models of that comic book character, I would be upset that someone was using my thing that I made and I'm not getting anything out of that. But you had brought up a point to me that, when it goes to buying licenses that and this is a problem. And I think we could say it George ran into with geometric is oh, that yeah. you, you, he did it the right way and, and got licenses for all those things way back. And when he started getting recast in Asia, the license holder or the licensee was license licensor. George licensor. is the licensee. Yes. So the person that has the license to give out, let's say it's Marvel. He, if you go to Marvel and say, Hey, I paid so much, so many thousands of dollars or hundreds, whatever it is for this license to be able to make this Spider-Man model, someone in Asia is copying me. I need your help to stop them from doing this. And Marvel or whoever goes, nah, we're not going to help you. That's on your own. Your problem. Yeah. That, that's your problem. That's not, that sucks. If you, if you're making sure that people are buying a license from you. You should be responsible, in my opinion, for helping them, like, what's the right word? Protect that product Mm -hmm. in a way so that it it makes people want to buy the license instead of just leaving them out to dry. Because then you're losing money. You paid all this money for a license and you got no help from the people that you're paying to. Which, again, that's why you have unlicensed stuff that does not mean it's okay to recast someone's stuff. Like it's just not. And if you're printing, casting a print is recasting in my opinion. It just is. It's taking something that's not yours and making money off of it. Yeah. And, and I had this licensing conversation with George. Um, 
because when this all happened, I, I called George to talk to him about it because I, I felt George is pretty level-headed, and I know in the past I've gotten insane, so I don't want to get insane again. <laughs> and I said, look, this is what's going on. Okay. And, you know, and I explained to him, you know, this guy feeds his family. And it's like, and it just infuriates me that somebody here just sees it. All they see is the almighty. I can make a buck off of this. Yeah. Okay. Now, and here's the thing too, compared to what you pay certain sculptors these days, these guys like, well, work for peanuts compared to these guys. Okay. Hire them, hire them to sculpt a kit for you. Yeah. And then cast as many as you want. It's yours. Yep. Okay. Well, what this leads to that's also, a, I mean, is, that's a good idea. Like that is legit. A great idea that puts okay. everything on the level. If you're interested in a piece, talk to him. I'll bet mm -hmm. if, I'll bet if this person contacted well and said, Hey, what could I pay you to be able to produce these as a resin? I'm sure well would work with, them. I'm sure. Or he'd sculpt them. Maybe the same thing. Or, in a same, different or pose. but different. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. What were you going to say before that? <laughs> oh, so I was talking to George. And I, I said, you know, and a lot of guys like to bring up this. The recasters like to bring up the, well, we're all thieving. Okay. We're all stealing. We're all this and that. And George had an interesting answer that no one's ever given me before to that. And he says, how does the guy making an unlicensed kit hurt the hobby where a recaster does hurt the hobby yeah that's a good point and so i looked at that and i go well yeah that's an interesting point that is a very good point um and and again i i don't want to say it never goes on there's still resin recasters out there obviously and you know i have my own lines Okay, and when I see something like an Aurora kit recast, it doesn't make me crazy. Okay, it just it doesn't because it's usually the stuff that's recast out of Aurora. Now you're never going to see from Atlantis or anything else. Okay, so it's you know that stuff doesn't make me crazy, but there are other people that say, well, no, it's still in the same ballpark, and I'm not, I can I'm see one of that argument people. too. <laughs> yeah. So, well, and so the other side of this coin, yeah, that'll brings, lead you into where you wanted to go, I think. Yeah. Uh, which while Scott is having this online argument, I kind of got into a, a discussion on YouTube. I only got responded to once because I think they realized I'm correct. I'll go with that theory. Um, it was works. a, it was a games workshop video. There are for people who are in the garage kit thing, you might not see any of the games workshop stuff. But if you follow any sort of Warhammer anything, there are at least a hundred different more. It's got to be of Warhammer Games Workshop YouTube people that either do reviews, product stuff coming out. Games Workshop sends stuff out to people to review all the time. There's there's big controversy with that, with people breaking embargoes and all that. But one of the one of the YouTubers this week put up a video or last week put up a video how he bought a thousand dollar scanner and was scanning miniatures and showing everyone how to scan miniatures and how he was going to use them in his game. And I'm like, that's not okay. It, it, it is not absolutely. It's this to me, that's the modern day equivalent of recasting because yeah, the detail might not be there. And this might get into a little bit of what we talked about with Michael Berglund before and how he was using a scanner to alter pieces and change them. I am not a fan at all of in this. And he had talked about it on his, when, when that whole controversy blew up. So I don't want to mm -hmm. get into it that much, but I am personally, and this is me. I'm not speaking for model club DV. I'm speaking for Jason Walker. When you take something and scan it and you scale it up or down, that doesn't belong to you. And you're selling it as if it does, that's not okay. And that's what this guy was doing. But when I called him out, I was like, Hey, if you want games works and I, it's, that's a company. It's like Disney to me as a kid and they're like, they're a huge company. I love their lore. I love their characters. I like it's the, I've been following that stuff since I was a kid. And if, if people keep, 
they even they're having a problem with recasters in China as well with all of their stuff. And but now if you introduce scanning and 3D printing into all this, eventually Games Workshop can't make any money off of miniatures. And people over here will be like, well, they're an evil corporation. They are charging too much for their stuff anyway. If you keep scanning their pieces and putting them out there for yourself, even if you're not selling them. So the way the, the miniatures work, if you're using them for a game, you might have to buy 100 miniatures to play the game. If you buy 10 and scan them a whole bunch of times, you're still taking those other 90 miniatures that you would have paid Games Workshop for. You're taking that money out of their pocket, which they would put towards new development, new sculptors, new artwork, new movies, new games, whatever. So eventually it goes away and you're hurting what you love. And I think that's what recasters are doing here with model kits. You're hurting what you love. And if you want to see all of this go away, keep, mm -hmm. keep scanning things, keep recasting things, keep casting things that you print and all of this eventually goes keep away or selling changes. STL or keeps yeah, or like, yeah, this, this is my favorite. Somebody will buy an STL for $20. Okay. And they'll go on Etsy and they'll sell the STL for $5. And it's like, that's like the most blatant steal yeah, in the I world. Don't even, like, okay. Or you'll and, see, and I think I don't, you've probably seen it. And I know Jamie side calls it out too, when he sees it. On those on the STL boards on Facebook, someone will pop up there once in a while. Hey guys, follow this link. It's ten dollars for five hundred different files, and it's like, no scumbag, you're stealing. We always try and shut those people down as mm -hmm. soon as we see it because it's it's not okay. None of this is okay, and I'd love to hear people's thoughts down below on all of this. It everything's changing. And yeah. the technology is there to make it really easy to steal. And please, before yeah. you start stealing, you're wrecking what you love. Like you're ruining it. And, and you're not, again, you're not talking a ton of money. No, but okay. you know what? It, go, it goes to the Joker theory. Some people just want to watch the world burn. Right. And I think there's some people that just are like, I just want to be an asshole recaster and be like, ha I got you. Like, I think there is that because there's no other explanation. You're not making a lot of money. It's more of like, I can do it. So I will. And we need to get well, rid of those people. And, and, and again, it, point, it's like, so what happens is, is the guy that sells his STLs for $25. And I think the prime example was there's a Mary Jane out there that was really popular. Yeah. And all of a sudden everybody on Etsy is selling prints of it or selling, um, you know, and it was a fifteen dollar file. And again, I don't care if you print ten of them and sell them. If you're giving the guy fifteen dollars for every one you do, okay. Yeah. Or you've worked out some kind of agreement with the guy saying, "Hey, man, I'll give you a hundred dollars extra if you let me print twenty of these." And the guy says, "Okay, that's between you and him." Okay, but man, you better have it in writing because it, it's gonna. If people have some kind of ethics, hopefully they do. Um, they're gonna start seeing this and the bad thing is there's no way to protect the stl and this is why guys like tony cipriano will not release their stuff to people to print for themselves because he can't protect it if he sells it to to me and i say well fuck it i can make some money off this and i go on to etsy or whatever and start selling them tony don't get a dime of that i do and and so there's, I can see why I they don't Eric, sell the STLs. Eric talked about it a little bit. There's ways that they're learning how to watermark some of that stuff to track them a little better to make sure there's not a problem. Mm -hmm. But yeah, until technology catches up with that, it's really hard. And for people that are worried about having their STLs stole, stolen and all that, I think it's I think in the long run, if you build and I've said this on the show multiple times, if you build an audience. People will police that for you and it'll be kept to as minimum as possible. And people will go out and hunt those people down and they'll get shunned and it needs to start happening more. And that's why I wanted to name names, but we're not. well, it's, uh, yeah, we'll give it a I, chance. We'll see if it clears up <laughs> a chance. I, I, I hope that person is watching or someone goes back to that person. And that person has at least some decency and says, man, I don't want to take food out of that guy's kid's mouth. Who's yeah. down there living in Brazil. Okay. Yeah. You know, who probably, okay. 
Well doesn't even have a 3D printer. Okay. <laughs> How crazy is that? Well, it makes sense after seeing a couple of the files. Well, but you I, have to, yeah. but, but the good thing about well is if you got a problem with a file, he'll yeah. fix it. So, yeah. um, so that, I mean, that's our, our, like, just do the right thing, do the right thing. It's just, it really bugged me this week with the, with the Warhammer stuff with this, mm. like, and it was just out there in the open. Here's how to scan. Here's how to do this. And I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Like, and what's funny too, is in that thread that I got mentioned in the producer did come on that thread. So if you find it, you're going to know who it is. And he did come on that thread and said, Oh yeah, I got him," And listed all the ones he had. Yeah. And I called him out right there and I said, no man, and ain't right that you're doing that. And I explained why, but you know what? For the most part, people don't know or people don't care. I, I, you know, and that's I, why we're trying to educate. Yeah. We're trying to educate the people that do care. And there's always going to be a group of people that again, sure. like to watch there's the always- world burn. And if they could save a dollar, they will. But so. that's our topic. It was short. I just, we both kind of had to get this off our chest. I was scanning. Yeah, it get started s- for me yeah. at Wonderfest <laughs> and <laughs> has continued because it popped up again. So yeah. scanning is going to get ugly quick. I would say in the next five years, it's going to be a huge. Now, if you're the producer of a kit, and you want to have someone scan it so you can make it bigger or smaller or whatever, by all means, that's your right to do it. I, I, that's another big thing. Like if, a, if you own a sculpture, you paid a sculptor in the past to sculpt something for you. And you own that sculpture. You own that sculpture in my opinion. And that comes from someone who has sculpting back. Like if, so, if I sold something to someone, they own it. They can do what they want. If they want to scan that and make, make more, Go right ahead. Work that out in the details before and say, hey, I might do this. But if you own something, you own it. That's my opinion. And if you want to make copies of it, bigger or smaller, you have every right to do that without paying anyone extra money. Because they sold you a sculpture for a purpose, which was reproducing and casting and printing and doing all, you know. Well, let's hear your thoughts on that, too. Let's hear everyone's thoughts on that. If you want to kick back some money just to be nice, that's on you, but I don't think you owe that person really anything. I'll probably catch hell for this, but it's That's like, right. and I, we talked about it. I think, who was I talking to? It was it you model club TV at gmail.com. Yeah, well, I'll put the, we'll put the email up. There's the email. Send us an email too. But like, if I, if you sold a painting to someone, they own that painting. If they want to make a calendar with pictures of that painting, Usually you can't like, that's your painting now, you know, that you can do what you want with that, but all right, moving on. I hope we didn't lose anybody there. We probably did, but oh, well, the rest of this is really short. We have one email and one voicemail. Which one do you want to do first? Do the voicemail. Do the voicemail first. Awesome. All right. Yeah, CG blade. Nice, short and to the point. Here we go. All right, Jason, I'm going to see if I can do this under a minute and a half. And this Billy Scott won't fall asleep either. Have you guys, I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube where they're painting faces with primary colors. Or they're using like a red, blue, yellow or something like that. And they're just going over each one with a wash. And they're leaving it that way. Have you guys seen this? Some of it looks really good. Um, do you guys know when this came about and do you ever use this? I was just wondering, um, I haven't tried it yet and I do use a lot of pastels in my faces, especially the girls. So, um, take care and, uh, thanks guys. Bye. All right. So what he's talking about is using washes of yellow, red, and blue to add, to shift the tones in someone's face a little bit when you're doing it. And he asked where it came from. It started, I think where most where i first saw it was sideshow collectibles put up one of those painting videos and it was painting superman's face the bust for super the the face for superman i'm not going to say portrait i'm not going to say it because it's stupid i hate the word portrait for sculpture pieces it's a fucking head jason walker model club tv at gmail.com right there ready there's the email back on the screen it's not a portrait i hate it fucking head portraits of fucking drawing anyway Sorry for the F-bombs. That was me. 
But anyway, so they were using a wash of yellow up towards the top of the head, red in this area, and kind of a blue in the bottom. And the reason for that is this, especially if it's somebody who's supposed to be outside, is you get more light hitting this area of your face. And so that's kind of rep represents some of that sun tone that you get there. In here, the red is more you blush in this area of your face the most. And your, your cheeks tend to be redder. Your nose tends to be a little more redder than other par areas of your face. So it adds some of that. And then the blue, this part down below is usually more in shadow. And you get a little more blood, like the bluer tones in your face in this area. So they're not, t they're not taking paint and doing that. It's more of a wash over those areas or a glaze. And it, I have tried it a few times and I really like the effect that it does, especially the blue on the bottom and the red in this area. If you go and look at someone's face, you'll see it and how it, you'll see just that focus. Actually, in our gallery this this episode, um, my brain just cracked. <laughs> Paul Weaver, everybody, that's who I did the Salma for. And he, at the end of this episode, we're going to have a ton of his paint jobs. Amazing painter. He's on uh, Instagram is Disturbed Earth as well, I think. Please, I'll put up a link. Follow his work. But he has a Christopher Lee in there, and I'll put it up here. That kind of shows he does a perfect Christopher Lee, because Christopher Lee always kind of has that five o'clock shadow going on like that darker kind of blue tone underneath and it kind of helps do some of that so watch at the end look out paul stuff all at the end of this episode and uh great work but yeah i'll put up a link to that sideshow video i'll find that as well but give it a try it's definitely worth i use the uh, citadel shades for it thin down not straight out of the pot to do it when i've done it and i think that's what they were using right. in that video as well what no, no, yawn. I said sorry. You yawn again. I hate you. I know. I'm All right. Tired. And our only. Oh, wait, other... I want to go back to that voicemail because yeah. I took that voicemail differently. Uh oh. Because he was talking about people painting in primary colors. I think that's what he. But. Okay. So I was wondering is he talking more like the stuff that Jeff Camp did? No. He's. T I, I think almost. And if we're wrong, let us know, CG. But I'm almost positive right. he's talking about doing those washes. Of okay. yellow, red, and blue, because it has and picked up. No and there's, opinion. I've seen a few other YouTube painters do this as well, uh, and it works. It definitely works. Our only email comes from Greg Damian. Hey guys, writing you at the last minute to say how much I enjoyed your last show, especially opening tubs in Scott's basement. Saw a few more kits I'd love to have from Scott's stash. Enjoying meeting you and finally seeing Scott at Wonderfest. Look like you guys were quite busy at the show and. He put Jason in parentheses <laughs> and glad you did well. I managed to pick up everything that I was hoping to get at the show and even picked up a few I had not planned on. It wasn't that always, isn't that how it always is. Could have bought more, but knowing what will be coming down the pike later this year, I forced myself to stop. I saw a lot of kit promos that will empty my pockets, pop it, pocketbook later. Seeing Mark, War Mark Worthling's new Godzilla kit was fantastic. So much more impressive in person than via images i did good at the model contest winning four bronze and my first silver congrats but the cherry on top was getting the mike parks best humor super deformed award for my invasion of the saucer men kit done by mike parks it was quite as special as that was quite special and i always loved mike's work and i am glad i was able to convey the feeling he had instilled in his skills i also find found out that scott casted the award by his lonesome Guess Scott and I are now connected. Anyway, we'll cut this short. Hope to see you guys at for that barbecue in Scott's yard later this summer. Scott painted that too, just so you know. And not that it was. And here's the image, paint. so everyone knows what we're talking about. Yeah. Seriously, congrats on the award, and congrats on painting that award, Scott. Good job. Yeah. So, the barbecue in your yard. We're gonna do it. We are gonna do it. Okay. We're going to try to do it on August or September. I don't want to do it. No, September, because I don't want to do it. I have a lot going on. I have to go see a new grandchild at the end of August. Aww. And, um, Grampy. So September is probably going to be better. Plus, it's not going to be 100 degrees, you know? So, um, I think September, October, like early October yeah. would be cool. And, you know, so I, 
we'll do it. We're going to try to pick a weekend maybe in the next couple episodes and we'll start actually doing some hard planning. Yeah. Getting some RSVPs and, you know, I'd like to get at least five guys coming down, you know, or, or over wherever they're coming from. I'd like to get at least five guys. And if I could get more, great. We got the room. You know, oh, I've got the room. Yep. So awesome. Yeah, yeah we're going to plan that out. That's our episode, Scott. Episode. This might be the shortest one in a while. Really? Yeah. Wow. Good. Well, I hope everybody enjoys the, uh, oh, next episode. I might be here. I might not. All depends on how the uh, mouth surgery goes. <laughs> so it might be Scott. I might be working the, the levers in the background. <laughs> Uh, so you'll have to pick a co-host if I'm not ideas Jordan. what yeah Jamie no she's not allowed well that's true we had one guy stopped watching because <laughs> of it but All right, um yeah we'll see, we'll gonna, see. hey and if you thought Jason mumbled now oh yeah just wait <laughs> just that's wait. actually one of the things Phil said Cause I told him about that and he, and he says, I said, so I don't know what he can do with a mouthful of gauze or whatever and go Phil said, well, you mumble through it. Like he does all the time. And I was like, that was great. So, uh, I w I hope everyone else has social anxiety like I do. And those of you that won last episode, I apologize for the lateness and getting things sent out, but they did get out early this week. So if you haven't got it yet, Whoa. Oh, look, a Yeti with a lid. And guess what? Not a drop. Uh, nothing spilled. So, okay. <laughs> um, but anyway, if um, you didn't get it yet, you should have it by the time of this episode. Yeah, I out. think the thing I sent out should be there soon. Um, voicemail. And I didn't send out Model Club stickers with this group, and I'm sorry. I'll try to include Oh, Scott, and I even gave them to you. Oh, boy. Ah. Uh. We'll have to get them out. All right. Voicemail. If you want to leave us a voicemail, 708-816-4299. And the email again is modelclubtv at gmail.com. Uh, again, this one, you are leaving. I'm not your Huckleberry, Huckleberry in the comments below. I'm your Huckleberry. I'm your Huckleberry. And then if you are interested in the pickup kit from Zotes, Zotes, and Ellie Raphael. Uh, no, they're calling it a pickup kit because Jason's going to pull up in a van and try to pick you up. I want a van so bad. Um, you got to email me at Model Club TV Gmail and we'll figure it out. I'll see how many emails I get for it. If you're interested, let me know. If I got no one who's interested, we're going to have to do it the old fashioned way and then you'll probably have to pay for shipping for that one. Figure it out. Or I can bring it to Wonderfest. I don't know. We'll figure it out. All right, Scott. Say goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.
we just ended the episode and we forgot to talk about something that we both saw today. Scott, what did we both see today? Something we'll never unsee. And I'm, I'm going to hold on before I'm editing this back into the beginning of the episode. So we finished recording the whole thing and we forgot this is how terrible this was. Scott, what was it? The Monsters trailer from Rob Zombie. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. I, I saw that one good thing about it. Dude. <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry to all involved. I know Dan Roebuck is a garage kid guy from way back, but. And actually, when you hear his voice, he does sound a lot like Fred Gwynn. I, I'll give it that. But the rest of it, oh. But first of all, okay. It looks cheap. Like, Yeah, did, did you read any of the comments? I did. Someone said they shot it in 24, like 22 frames a second instead of 20, some other weird thing that made it look like. I don't even know where to begin with it. Like, I don't. I didn't even see anything that made me chuckle. No, it looked terrible. Terrible. Somebody like, commented it looked like a fan made YouTube video. Someone said, <laughs> someone said, and this is the best comment I saw, is that it looked like a parody porn movie without the naked porn stuff. And that's totally what it looks like. It looks like they're all about to start banging. And it's, n- <laughs> dude, it, oh my God. First of all, okay. It's like they're all about to start banging. I can't even, I, I, I know Rob Zombie probably has seen some of my comments and hates me because I don't, I appreciate some of the stuff he's done, but I hate his movies. I don't like even, I don't know how to say this and I'll probably get crap from somebody. But like you go to see him live, right? And he's got this brilliant stage show with all this stuff going on. But all this stuff is like classic horror, anime images, Nosferatu's thrown in there, the like all this stuff, right? And your average Joe Rob Zombie guy, I think, thinks that that's Rob Zombie's stuff and doesn't know that he's taking all of that stuff from other places. And it's not his original ideas. You know what I mean? And it feels that way with the movies too, is that he always uses homage. Like I'm doing an homage to this to mask unoriginality. Like house of a thousand corpses was billed when I was reading Fangoria back when that came out, the scariest, most horrible horror movie ever made. You were not going to believe this. And it's the dumbest fucking thing in the world. It's just terrible. And I know there's probably people that are listening to me like, that guy doesn't know what he's talking about. They're dumb. His movies are terrible. They're not good. Halloween, not good. His wife, ugh. that is the worst Lily Munster impression. Like, it's terrible. All right. Well, my <laughs> problem, and it goes back to Peter Jackson. Sorry. Okay. Is. I just get so frustrated. You get these guys that have all this money, so they're going to remake the world. And you know what? There's some things that don't have to be remade. And the monsters is one of them. And it's kind of too, like when I see like the Starsky and Hutch movie and the Dukes of Hazard movie and stuff like that, I'm like, these were bad TV shows. Okay. We don't need to see more. Right. We don't need to see more bad. I agree, I agree with you. Okay. Monsters and Charlie's Disney. Angels. That's another one. Okay. Yep. Um, it's just ugh. But it's yeah, this is really this this could be and I grew up watching the monsters. Like that's what I watched at lunchtime all the time as a kid. I love the monsters. And it's just and I saw people trying to defend it. Like, this is what the monsters was. It was kind of corny, and I'm like, that no, it was different. There's something, it's not mm-hmm. it's not. It, it, it feels so, ugh. Ugh. Yeah, I, I. So disappointing. Yeah. And I expected it, but 
Well, it's like the Adams Family movie. I, I don't think they were great either. No. You know, compared I want to an Adams Family movie that looks like the comic strip. Right? Like, I'd like model kids that look like the comic strip. Yeah. With a real gross looking Gomez. Like that real, that pig nose. and Yeah, but it, yeah, it's. Uh, yeah, I, I just don't. Again, I don't get it. I, I appreciate that you have your Rob Zombies and your Kirk Hammetts and your guys that were monster kids and are really fans of this stuff and want to promote it. Man, I, I'm i 100% behind that. Okay. Yes. But, but there's a way to do that, right? Yeah. Without. Yes. Like, make a good Frankenstein movie. Like, but here's the thing. Make okay. If you're gonna do a creature from the Black Lagoon remake, don't remake the creature because the creature is what made the creature from the Black Lagoon in the in the you know. If you want to tweak the the original design a little bit, okay, but let's keep that original design because that's what worked. Okay. I could I could live with an updated design like Monster Squad. I think the Monster S- Squad creature is a perfect Steve Wang's design. Is a perfect upgrade to that. Thing. it's not the same but you've changed it a little bit it's still kind of it's still the guy walking around right it's not a fish swimming 500 miles an hour attacking people and pulling them out of those like I feel like that van helsing movie uh, the, the dracula and the wolf man and the monster they were just so stupid looking I, thank god for kate beckinsale that's all i can say <laughs> man i i like I saw that today and was like, holy crap, it's worse than I thought it was going to be. Well, I didn't expect much. No, I thought it was going to be bad. But it because was it was worse. right up there like with Kong versus Godzilla for me. Okay, it was like, I'm not expecting much and I'm not going to be disappointed. I'm not even going to watch that piece of shit. If Dude, that's no, it. you know what? I am going to watch it. Just to see how fucking bad it is. Well, see, you're younger than I am. Okay, I'm almost 10 years older than you, so... You don't have two hours to spare. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I, two hours is a little more precious. Two hours to me is like six to you. So it's maybe we'll make this a separate little upload <laughs> and take this out of. Yeah, the main call show. it the oops we forgot. Oops we forgot. The yeah. dog on the Rob I, Zombie a, monster. Dude, I can't. And I, the sad thing is, and I like his music. I don't mind. And I like the the other side. I have an autographed Rob Zombie poster that I won. That is an amazing. It's a witch, an animated witch on a broom. And it's, it was like the tour poster. And I love the artwork on that thing. But I don't like that it says Rob Zombie on there. And I'm sure, oh man, it'd suck if Rob watches this stuff. But like I would go to the horror conventions when his, when his Halloween came out. There was a Halloween reunion for the Rob Zombie Halloween. It has Bill Mosley and all the people that were in the movie singing the praises of how amazing this movie was. And I guarantee there wasn't one person in that theater listening to this person talk who would say that it was better than the original. Like, there's nobody that says that. That's where but I am. We're still Mr. gonna hold nuts. Like, that's where I am with Mr. Jackson's King Kong. I agree with you. <laughs> Did okay, not like King um, Kong. So it's. I don't know, man. It's everything sucks. I like. Everything just sucks when it comes to new movies. Like, there's rarely anything new that's good. Well, and like I say, if you're going to remake it, you don't have to redesign the wheel. And I'm not saying he redesigned the wheel. The costumes were okay. I don't, the makeup's wrong on a lot of it. Like, when you, but yeah, first of all, Herman doesn't look good in that green. No. Okay. And if you ever saw the movie Monster Goes Home, Monster Go Home, okay, they had him in that blue green. That they did use to yeah, film in yeah. black and white. Yeah. Okay. And it was still weird seeing Herman in color. Yeah. But it worked. There was a Monsters. There was the one that I used to watch all the time. That it was a movie where they yeah, had Monst- that- Monster Go Home. No, there was another one where they had all the robots. Like they had all the other animal. They were like doing like robberies and stuff. Oh, I don't know. And that him must and, have been a made for TV movie. Oh, though. what was the name of it? That like, man. Anyway. Oops, we forgot. 
We should do these more often. <laughs> Oops, we, we forgot. We forgot. The Monsters trailer. Bad. Oh, God dang. I, we got to figure out a way so we could do it like all the other shows where they talk over the stuff and not get in trouble. I think there is a way. I'll figure it out. But, man. All right, everybody. We'll talk to you soon. Hold on. I think Wait. I found it. It's like Munsters. Local wax museum. Yeah. Wax replicas of them. Yeah. Yeah. It's called the Munsters Revenge. That's what it is. Munsters Revenge. And it was a made for TV. Yep. 1981 American That's, made I, for TV. Yep. And it was, uh, they reunited original cast members, Fred Gwynn, Yvonne DiCarlo, and Al Lewis. And it was the last film made with most of the original actors from the 60s. Yeah, because I, w- I remember my favorite part of that is the creature from the Black Lagoon. Because they have the wax figure of the creature like walking by. It's, it was, I had that on VHS and would watch it every day that we taped it right was, off the TV. It was, it, yeah, it was released on VHS in 1986. Yeah. But well, we taped it right off a of TV. I, I think I still oh, okay. have it. That's how I used to watch Creature from I used to watch my recording of Svengooly. Man. So disappointing. Like, just... Oof. Dude. Anyway. Aren't you glad we don't bust on models like this? Dude, uh, yeah, people would get... <laughs> oh. All right. That was Oops, Sorry, we forgot. Rob so, uh, Sorry, it's... Rob. Try again, man. That's... There's a, and I, I'd hate to be one of these guys that I watch on YouTube, but there's a whole like cottage industry of people's YouTube channels that bag on Marvel and how terrible everything is now. And I watch that shit all the time. I love it, but I don't want to speak something like that, but geez, it was bad. <laughs> and if we both agree that it was bad. Must be good. Yeah, it probably is. Everyone's going to love it. Watch. All right. Oops, we forgot. Bye.